Welcome to the LIFO method presentation where we're going to be talking about last in first out method. That's what it stands for, otherwise known as the opposites of the FIFO method, otherwise known as that method that's illegal now under IFRS and ASPE or, or PE GAP, I guess you could say, but is okay under, under US GAP. And uh, ASPE is just uh, private enterprise gap for Canada so it is but IFRS is is international standards so LIFO is not okay under these types of standards but it is okay under US gap so I just wanted to highlight that really quickly you might be wondering why we're talking about LIFO then because of course a lot of public com well all public companies have to um, abide by IFRS standards. So why are we talking about it? Well, it used to be a very uh, important part of inventory expensing and it's also part of accounting theory so I thought we would cover it and also I have a large uh, American audience so I thought I would cover it since it is okay under US GAAP. So we're gonna go through the same problem and just find the cost of goods sold and the ending inventory on January 31st. So let's go ahead and begin. So first off we're going to of course find out how much our inventory is worth so we're going to slowly do this again just since I did not save it accidentally so I'm going to have to perform this time consuming step. You can of course fast forward it or if you haven't seen it from the last video of course you can watch me multiply these out. This is what we're just trying to get the we're just trying to get the inventory value, so I'm multiplying out the units by their cost. It kind of makes sense, or it should make sense. 3,000, then we move to the next purchase. This is a sale, so we disregard that. 100 times $17, 100 units times $17 is equal to 1,700, and finally, uh, 300 times 20 is going to be 6,000. Then I will be finished with this time-consuming time vampire of a, an activity. All right, so in total that gives us 13,700 for our inventory value, and of course we have 900 units. So where do we go from here? Of course, you remember we we well if you watched the the previous videos covering FIFO and life or FIFO and average weighted cost, we look at the sales. So we have sale entries here, and we need to find the cost of those sales because that's what cost of goods sold is. So we look at the 300 units. Are we going to use this? No, we're not going to use this because this is part of the revenue entry, so we disregard that number. Are we going to use this number? Well, no, we're not going to use that number either because that's the number we would use if we were using the FIFO method because that's the first in inventory, but we're using the LIFO method, so last in is the first out. So we're going to be using, we're going to be using this number right here. $20. So we're going to multiply 30, 30 by $20. I'll actually get rid of that arrow because it'll start looking a little bit confusing on the screen. So 30 times $20, but you know what was multiplied by what. It was just uh, the first sale and we're expensing it using the last in unit cost. So if you look at our like milk example over here, to the bottom right, um, what we're doing is using the last and first out method, uh, we're getting rid of the most recent purchase or we're expensing the most recent purchase. So of course you know that milk is, uh, or the more the more recent or I guess you could say the, the freshest milk is at the back of course so we're, we're getting rid of that or we're expensing that milk inventory unit and then as we as we go on to our second one which is 250 units so we just we just eliminated this level right here uh, next we need to use 250 units and expense that so there's 100 units here so we can get rid of 100 units or expense 100 units at $17 which is going to be 1700 
But the thing is, we need another 150. So there's going to be 50 left at this level, and we're going to expense 150 at $15. And I, th I think that's... Uh, I think that's 2250. Yes. All right. So I'm gonna write that there, and actually figure out what the total is as well, since I'm doing this, this video on a different day than the other videos. So 7700 plus 2250 is 9950. Okay. So that is going to be our cost of goods sold number. And looking back at our milk, we've just expensed another unit of milk. Uh, the the second most recent level, as you can see here, and then we expensed some of the the uh, the 200 units purchase entry. So we're kind of getting rid of a few of these uh, items, or we're expensing a few of those items there. So just remember, our cost of goods sold is 9,950. And of course, to get the the ending inventory, you're just going to take your your inventory value and subtract 9950 because that's how much inventory you will have left on your books. So that is going to be 50, and then plus the 3,700. So 3,750 is going to be your ending inventory. And of course, we can also uh, do it another way like I've shown you by multiplying what's left out by so so 300 units by ten dollars is equal to three thousand and fifty units times fifteen is equal to seventy or seven hundred and fifty I should say and that gets you three thousand seven hundred and fifty which is your cost of goods sold so you can do it either way so we have our cost of goods sold and our ending inventory. So that is done using the LIFO method. Now I just wanted to really kind of um, kind of tie everything together and talk about why we don't use this method anymore. Well first off, it doesn't seem appropriate for uh, mu much of the much of the inventory expensing. So inventory expensing, or I should say I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that out a little bit differently. I'm gonna say that doesn't reflect, doesn't reflect how it, I forgot to say it doesn't reflect, doesn't reflect how inventory flows. And what I mean by this is that looking at our milk example, we were expensing the most recent purchases because that's what LIFO is about. It's expensing the last in purchases. So we were expensing the milk at the back. And of course, if you think about the flow of inventory, people don't go to the back and just ravage through all the, the inventory and then grab all the milk at the back. Like, well, I, I guess some people might, but um, the general consensus of people usually grab the milk that's at the front. So LIFO does not really accurately reflect how inventory flows. And second of all, LIFO can sometimes create misleading net income, net income figures. And that's because normally when we're expensing, when we're expensing inventory, we're expensing the most recent stuff first. So uh, we'll be expensing the $20 stuff first and then moving back towards the $17 stuff and then expensing the $15 stuff. So technically uh, we're, we're expensing goods in kind of like a deflationary setting and that doesn't usually exist most times prices rise so most times most times prices rise so most times i think the standard rate of inflation is usually like two to three percent so lifo doesn't really accurately reflect uh normal inflation and of course um it'll have you'll have lower lower net income um, because of the higher unit costs, and then as you expense older stuff, you'll have higher net income, which might 
mislead investors and so on. So just take that into account as to why LIFO is not used anymore as a method even while well, it is used uh, under US GAAP, but of course not for IFRS or ASP or PE GAAP or Canadian GAAP. So it's not okay uh, under those standards. All right, so I think I've covered most of what I wanted to in this, in this uh, unit regarding inventory expensing. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos, you can tweet us at NotePirate, you can like us on Facebook to receive updates, or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped. And like always, thanks for watching us on YouTube.